So glad you are with us for live at noon. We're no stranger to wildfire smoke here in Utah, but the impact it can have on us depends on where it comes from, how it blows into the state. Researchers led by a University of Utah professor came up with a way to determine whether the wildfire smoke will stay high up in the atmosphere or come down to our level. And that will lead to more accurate predictions of whether and when smoke from a nearby wildfire really becomes a serious health risk for people here on the ground. We want to go in depth and joining us live is that professor, Dr. Heather Holmes. It's nice to have you here, chemical engineering associate professor uh, who led this research project. Now, uh, Dr. Holmes, let, let's start with uh, what we're experiencing, you know, right now, because this is really what we're talking about. In fact, there's a live picture of Salt Lake City that our viewers can see behind me, and it's smoky. Yeah, definitely. So the thing we're experiencing right now is there's a lot of fires happening all across North America, essentially right now. But there's large fires in California and Oregon, and that smoke can transport really long distances downwind. And so we're seeing some of that today in Salt Lake City. And we saw it several weeks ago back in June as well. Is it as simple as if we see the smoke, then it's it's smoky and not good for us? Or is, is there more to it than that? As with everything in the atmosphere and the weather, nothing is ever really just simple, right? Yeah. Um, I think we all know that from looking at weather forecasts and trying to time rain. And smoke is very similar. So the smoke outside can be in various different layers in the atmosphere vertically. And so even if we can see the smoke, sometimes it's really far away. And then other times it's kind of mixing down to the surface. And you might kind of experience this on your own when you go outside, for example. Sometimes the smoke is really strong. You can smell it. It smells like the campfires. Yeah. Right yeah. There. And other times you don't smell it as much. So there's a large vertical distribution that happens uh, that varies throughout the whole atmospheric layer. Boy, when you said that, that really struck a chord because that, that is true. Sometimes you, you go outside and even though the fires are in Idaho or Montana or California, you are... It, it smells like you're next to the fire. Um, so, so what is what makes that different? How, do, how does that happen that some of it gets low and some of it stays high? It stays high. Yeah, there's a lot of really complex mixing that happens. So we a lot of times think of winds as happening horizontally. We get those gusts of winds that come through and we can feel those. Mm -hmm. There's a lot mm -hmm. of really complex mixing patterns vertically. And so those different layers in the atmosphere and whether or not things can mix down, that's driven a lot by the vertical winds in the atmosphere. And so that's interesting, vertical winds, because when we all picture winds, we do picture the horizontal lines. We're used to seeing the weather forecast and thinking about like the jet stream. and, and and, uh, and that's what gets the smoke to us, right? I mean, it's, it, uh, essentially we're in exactly the wrong uh, place in the jet stream for this, these terrible fires that happen uh, to the west of us. Yeah, the, all those winds really far away from the Earth's surface. So when you look up and you see the clouds moving really fast, those are all the prevailing winds. So it's the direction the winds are going to bring things from one location to another. And so you're absolutely right. We're downwind of California, for example, and so the smoke that's occurring there will get transported to us in Utah. And so um, are there different compositions to uh, the types of fires that are sending things to us as well? So if it's a different kind of forest burning or if it's a different heat of the fire that's sending, you know, sending the ash into the air, uh, what do you see as those differences? There's so many differences with fires. You can have smaller fires smoldering where the smoke is being released closer to the earth's surface. And then you can have these really large wildfires like the Dixie fire right now that's happening in California where that smoke is getting lofted so high into the atmosphere. That fire will even create its own weather patterns. Clouds will form because of that fire. It changes everything in the atmosphere. And those plumes that get lofted really high up those can transport really long distances downwind. We really need this kind of research because, uh, you know, we've been talking here on our newscast that uh, we're now seeing our red air days in the summer and, and uh, not, not in the, we didn't have them in the winter this year. Um, and so is, is your research going to help refine um, those, those air days so we understand what it is we're breathing? Yeah, so my lab actually does study both those winter days and these summer days with the wildfire. So it's kind of a great combination for us to study. So our goal is to create better tools to try and forecast those warnings. So can we use this information now to improve 
whether or not we will know that we're going to have a red air day tomorrow or two days from now. Well, it's a tough well, it's reality a tough real. to talk about, but it's sure better if we understand it. So, uh, uh, Dr. Holmes, thank you so much. Uh, Heather Holmes from the University of Utah, Professor of Chemical Engineering. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for chatting.